brings to life. Issue one, sodomizing the UN. Do you see any uh, reason for hope here? No, I don't. But we have to be resolute and firm. The U.S. showdown with Iraq escalated this week, and the international community stepped in. Iraq's unrelenting resistance to U.S. members on the weapons inspection teams of the U.N. Special Commission, UNSCOM, compelled the Security Council to act. King Jesus. On Wednesday, the 15-member council unanimously approved a resolution that, one, condemns Iraq for the expulsion of the U.N. inspectors and demands that they be allowed into Iraq immediately. Two, bans foreign travel by Iraqi officials who interfere with U.N. inspections. Three, suspends any further Security Council cut or lifting of existing economic sanctions against Iraq until Iraq cooperates with the weapons inspections. Four, warns that further measures will be taken if Iraq fails to comply. The further measures in the UN text are unspecified, notably no mention of military action. When such a warning was sought, Russia, France, China, Egypt, and all the Arab nations refused to approve of such a warning. The resolution had no impact on Iraq. On Thursday, the day after the UN's unanimous vote, Saddam expelled U.S. members of UNSCOM, not only from the teams, but from the country. Here's Iraq's deputy prime minister stating the number one step his country has taken in response to the UN. First, uh, the expulsion of the remaining American individuals who are working with UNSCOM. Responding, the UN announced it will withdraw all members of all UN inspection teams. The current status as we go to press is this. All members of all UN inspection teams are out of Iraq. And the punitive measures of the Wednesday resolution are in place. Further, unspecified UN measures, pointedly no mention of military action, will be invoked as appropriate. Question, is Clinton likely to use the force against Iraq now that the weapons inspectors are withdrawn? David Gergen. John, if the United Nations remains as limp-handed as it is now and the Allies remain uh, divided, Saddam won't act. Clinton will have to. He's going to have to crack him. Helena. Well, I think Saddam's major goal is to divide the coalition and divide, divide the UN Security Council. And I think the best way to do that is if Clinton does act alone. So I think Clinton is very reluctant, except he apparently is going to go ahead and send those U-2 planes over there. If the Iraqis shoot down a plane, then, you know, it begins. Rich Lowry. I think Clinton has to use force. I mean, this is a humiliating situation. It's dangerous. The question is whether he's going to go beyond pinpricks. I mean, we should uh, go after every one of those weapon sites. And we should make Saddam Hussein and the people around him fear for their lives. Now, but the problem is I doubt Clinton's willing to do that. What do you think of that, Mark? I, Scorched I, Earth. I completely agree with that. Uh, what we should do is form up as big a posse as we can. Uh, we'll get the Brits for sure. If anybody else will join us so that, it's, so that we're doing it with somebody else. But basically, it's going to be an American-led operation. It has to happen, and it should be massive. Mm -hmm. The U-2 flies on Monday. Can you, do you know anything about the U-2, David? A little bit. I've never been up in one. You know the height it flies at, cruises at? At 11,000 feet, I believe. 70,000. 70,000 feet, I'm sorry. 70,000. they can't hit us. You know that's 13 miles up? Yeah. So it's difficult to hit. But you know what? Uh, I was told this very day that if a radar from the ground plays on the U-2, it can detect Right. radar and that is an act of war and we will then send the tomahawks in but yeah, you, you, know, you think what do you think of that oh i think absolutely i think we should and and uh, but john i think there may be a step before that and that is we may put a we may extend the no-fly zone over all of iraq i think we're going to start tightening the noose in a variety of other ways before we act it's very clear clinton doesn't want to act immediately i think eleanor's right about that but in the end he's going to have to act but well, the, problem, the price the, the price of acting is that you divide the arab community over there i mean they're not going to they're not going to back the u.s and the deal after the persian gulf war was that the u.s was going to move uh, on israel 
Israel, we were going to take the heat for a peace settlement. That hasn't happened, and they're not going to take it. Look, listen, you brought up, hold on, Morton, yeah, I'm glad you brought up the Arab community, because the Arab League does not want any military action. This is their statement, as you will read on your screen. The Secretary of the Arab League expresses a total rejection of any military measures against Iraq and calls upon the Security Council of the United Nations to work to contain this crisis by peaceful means. Now, just to get an idea of what's involved here, here are the members of the Arab League states. Algeria, Bahrain, Comoros, Djibouti, Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Libya, Mauritania, Morocco, Oman, Palestine, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, Tunisia, United Arab Emirates, and Ye Yemen. Look, the th volume of their trade with the United States is oh, about look, six, about not, 30. But just a moment. Yeah, I know. But, but they look. send about 14 million, uh, 14 billion dollars worth of goods here, and we send over there 16 billion dollars Do worth of goods. Think, Every you... one of those states is going to be very, very upset if there is unilateral action against, I against Iraq. I don't think so. I think they will. They will pretend You're to dreaming. be very. They will Already. pretend to be upset. No, they will. They want Saddam Hussein is a threat to that region. They would like somebody oh. else to do, to remove oh, the threat, and, 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 and Who they, has would, be, they would be up. glad. The wall, the, lobby, the wall lobby in Washington, yeah. D.C.? <laughs> Morton is exactly right. This is a craven, false unity, and they're just making these noises because they don't think Clinton is going to act, and when he does act, they'll be happy. Yeah, there, there's a lot of sympathy for the Iraqi people, and the Saudi, Saudi Arabia and Egypt are, are strong allies. They're on national security considerations. Clinton may well act alone, but there is a price to pay. Now, there are are other there are other other military options one would be to, one yeah. would be to take out the broadcast towers and oh, so oh, well, yeah. well, 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 they could wait a second playing they, military strategy let me finish let me finish they wouldn't be able to get the McLaughlin group but then GE, would, uh, 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 then you, GE could go in and rebuild the towers when it's over do, do you see David an intersection a linkage between the Middle East peace process and the Saddam Hussein phenomenon if you need help ask me oh, yeah. <laughs> well there's absolutely a linkage because the what's uh, the link well, I, as, the, as the Middle East peace process has frayed and, and, and uh, soured, there's, there's been a, the Arabs have, there, have moved away from us in a variety of ways, and there's been a crumbling of the, of the regime of sanctions against, against Iraq. You know, and I think if we get the Middle East peace process back online, that will help us with the Arabs. But the point with all of this is, yes, the Arabs may be uh, unhappy, but there's a much higher price to pay if we don't act. Exactly. Oh, we don't please. enforce the What's the higher price? price? The higher price we is that he's working on biological weapons, He's probably trying to hide them right now and succeeding uh, in doing uh, his it. His biological and chemical weapons, the, the uh, nerve gas, and et cetera, are they a danger to the world? Are they more of a danger to the world than the similar weapons that are held by the Chinese, the Russians, and the North yes, Koreans? Yes, because, oh, because, oh. because he has shown a proclivity has to he use been a them. Has he been a world terrorist? He has been. He certainly used chemical weapons against his own people. He used them against Iran. He would use them against them against Iraq. Against, he would use them against hey, anybody that he wanted. Just a moment. Just a moment. Do you have any reason to believe he's a world terrorist of yes. the category of Iran? Of Iran? I, I, I think he's a world terrorist yeah. of, of, the, of the category of anybody around here. He's used them more what than what anybody I'm else has. At here is, I want to get back to the intersection of, of the peace process and what's happening over, over well, in Iraq. Look, you want to speak yes, to that? But our action in, in respect to Iraq should not be determined by how the peace process is going in Israel. Yes, we should lean on Netanyahu. Yes. Look, Madeleine Albright is, is expressing displeasure with Netanyahu, yeah. but, that, but it cannot be a substitute Look, for action yeah. against Iraq. I find, I find that you are living in this antiseptic, inside the beltway, antiseptic atmosphere, where you are just, are you just uh, lost Look, touch with reality? Well, I'm not, let me, I let me tell, tell you something. I'm in touch with reality. The Arab world conceives of the United States today, stereotypically, as a unilateralist power, a bully. If we... Because, because we have taken we have taken pretty much sides with Israel, particularly Netanyahu, John, for the most part. Okay, no, John, just a moment. Well, listen wait. to the bad news. Listen to the bad news. Now, if we go in unilaterally to 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 Iraq today, this will fortify that image, and we will estrange a lot of our allies. Egypt already and Saudi Arabia are not attending the MENA conference, which is I taking know, place in Doha. John, a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. John, John, all, the Arabs understand, all the Arabs understand is force and power. We just have to show them oh. some, and they'll get more. You know, John, oh, you're right. There is a price to pay, but Clinton may have to pay that price. This guy is Lex Luthor over there. He is the, uh, you know, evil incarnate, and he lost the war however many years so John, ago. So, John, you would pull and the punch. And the condition of punch. losing was that we have the right to go in there and expect 
his weapons capability. And if he's not letting us, we do we, we have we have a right to go into well, yeah, it. Look at it. I want to hear Dave. I want to ask you then, John. If you you want to cozy up the Arabs and listen to them, then you wouldn't use force. You wouldn't you wouldn't go in and crack him. I would stretch this UN <coughs> discussion out as far as it can go. And I would put the onus on the multilateralists at the UN to take the military action if it comes to that. My feeling is that instead of focusing on the... And you would let his weapons... Would, instead of of the world. So you would have no inspections. Right now you would, you would eliminate inspections or you would yield to him, to his blackmail. Yeah, I, think, what, I, what, think, what, I yeah. think that instead of focusing for six years after the Gulf War on a U.S. policy, which is largely putting together the tatters of the, of the Bush policy after the Gulf War, and then letting it drift. Rather, we should be focusing on trying to reintegrate Iraq into the world community. I do not think that that issue was, issue was unreclaimable. You will remember during the Iran-Iraq war, while this, this gas you were talking about was being used, we were on the side of Iraq. Iraq was a stable nation. No, as a matter no, that's not. That, that was, was a stable no, nation. No, it wasn't. It was that what we were playing off one bad guy against another and 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 tilting toward the weaker of the two bad guys. But we were not pro Iraq. I also think, David, in answer to your question, that it's time that we took a, a broad look at our whole policy towards Iraq because the sanctions are not really working. Look at what Saddam's doing today. Yeah, well, uh, that, that may be true, John, but you're willing to let him build up the biological and chemical oh, weapons capacity. I want to see the proof of that. Well, we have a lot of news talk about John, that. John, I have a have list to. here of 20 nations that have chemical and biological weaponry. Yeah, but and they, some, and of, the, some of those okay. nations, including China, yeah, which has the, a very serious human rights problem. Yeah, how many of those nations have... We didn't beat them in a war five years ago. We didn't beat them in a war. How many of those nations have invaded their neighbor, threatened Saudi Arabia, threatened the world's oil supply, threatened Israel, in tried to bring down Israel? I would like to point out to you, as you know better than I do, that China did everything it could to get into Vietnam just a couple of decades yeah. ago. Listen, yeah, Saddam lost the Saddam war. We tried to border war. There was a border war and they didn't. If there, is, if there is leakage of terrorism from one nation to another, is it not more likely that that terrorism would come out of Russia in the form of some kind of a nuclear heist, or out of Iran, which has a long history of well, precisely but, but, doing that? China solved this, all the world's problems for all, in one for all, punch. Her, for all of his monstrosities, you cannot say, you cannot say that Iraq or Saddam Hussein has sponsored world terrorism. So yes, he can has. you? Can yes, you? Absolutely. Yes. Where? Where? Yes. In Kuwait. And he drove about the invasion I mean, of Kuwait. What is world terrorism if it's not invading your neighbor? And he kills, is that is that the only people. is that the only national interest of the United States to be so involved in this situation now? Is the oil in Kuwait? And you would let us no. John, it's not be just the oil in Kuwait. The the, we've been humiliated. He sends our inspectors out on, on the cars. Let me make it perfectly clear. To quote uh, Milhouse, let me make it perfectly clear. I am not defending Saddam Hussein. No, no. I think he's as much of a demon it as you like, are. It sounds like you don't keep your eye on the ball. Well, the ball is not Saddam Hussein. The sounds, ball is the world. Community. Well, it sounds like right. appeasement to me, John. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Clinton is letting the diplomatic string play out. I mean, he doesn't really want to yeah, use but force, ultimately, but he may ultimately have to. But but Saddam. Yeah. Why wants do you mean the he may have to? Why why does he have to? Why, why does, does he, he have why to? Why does he have to? Because the evidence indicates that Saddam. You know, you're is really saying you're really something. saying to the United Nations, patting them on the head. Yeah, you do your thing. We'll go along. But if you come up with, 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 a, with a resolution that requires, for example, U.S. inspectors that, to stay out, and we'll let the UN, John, other U.N. inspectors go in, we're not going to go along that with that team has destroyed more weaponry, <coughs> nuclear and biological, than was destroyed during Americans the war. On there the are team indications... To do, that? do they need Americans on the team to do that? You can't. It's, it's a matter of principle. Do they need them for competence or expertise? It's a matter of principle. You don't let the country... Oh dictate who's on the team. John, Plus, I think the expertise in, is with the Americans. John, John, a critical point here is that since the war has been over, we have destroyed more weapons in Iraq that we have found through those inspectors than we destroyed yes. during the war. In this night, fellow is continuing to manufacture oh, things. He was close to nuclear capability. If we can't keep him in his cage... David, nations can have chemical and biological weapons. Nations now have those weapons. Correct. That is not a sufficient reason for inflicting the kind of damage that we are contemplating now on Iraq. John, there is also a moral criteria. You cannot just unleash the kind of force that we have at our command John, without, without a compelling John, moral uh, justification. John, you understand? I, John, many people have guns in this country, but we take the guns away from murderers. Yeah, but John... Uh, Saddam Hussein lost the war, and a condition of ending those hostilities was that he would allow this inspection team into his country. So he is violating that. So there is a basis 
for the world to be concerned and for the world to intervene. I hope Clinton doesn't exit. have to do something alone. Who's winning the showdown with Iraq? The U.S., the U.N., or Saddam Hussein? David Gergen. Well, at the moment, it's been, it's been Saddam, but I think it's going sh to stop. I think Clinton's going to use force and use it massively. Eleanor Cliff. Saddam's not a winner. He didn't get the sanctions lifted, so I think it's a standoff. Nobody's Rich, a winner. Rich Lowry. I think Saddam's a big winner. He's making the mother of all comebacks. <laughs> uh, exactly More so. Tons. Saddam is a big winner until Clinton bashes him. Saddam is the, uh, the today winner. He is making the U.S. stand appear more and more isolated. Issue two, lame duck on a fast track. What we're going to do now is uh, to regroup a little bit and find a way to, to uh, succeed, and I think we'll be able to do that. Fast track trade authority was once hailed by the president as his top legislative priority. Well, this week that priority went down the tubes, and it was his fellow Democrats that handed the fast track defeat to Mr. Clinton. Only one out of five House Democrats would vote for fast track. Of the House Republicans, 70% would vote for fast track. The defeat was such a black eye to the president's confidence and authority. What is now called into question is whether he remains credible as a leader. With that goes the attendant danger of policy drift. Mr. Clinton says that fast track will live to fight another day, like next year. But nobody believes him. This is not dead. I don't see it uh, happening at this point, so it would appear to me that it's dead. Uh, maybe it'll come back to life next year, but I would suspect it'll be even more difficult than next year in an election year. Under the Constitution, Congress alone is vested with the authority to make trade policy. Fast Track would have enabled the president to negotiate trade deals with other nations and at the same time prevent Congress from weighing them down with a collection of qualifications, amendments, codicils, provisos, riders, special interest shields, or whatever else 535 congressional politicians can dream up, thus gutting even voiding them. Fast Track keeps the deal clean of all qualifiers. At the same time, Congress continues to enjoy its full constitutional power because the whole deal remains subject to a straight up or down no tinkering vote. Without fast track, the sovereign nations of Latin America or Asia or even Europe can hardly regard Clinton as a serious trade negotiator, knowing that Congress could later pick the deal apart. Question, why did the president suffer this critical defeat, the worst since the health care debacle three years ago, Rich Lowry? Well, I think House Democrats really don't like him very much and wanted to stick it to Clinton. And I think the most important part of the like story, him? well, because he's uh, moved to the center and betrayed them. He's really gone, gone his own way from the beginning. And I think the big yeah, story here is... Yeah, he made them uh, vote on welfare, which they sure, didn't want to do, and, and they the think budget, that's a hard bill. Yeah. Yeah. Let him talk, and let him talk. I was going to say, the, the big story here is the lack of the agenda that Clinton has. This is his major initiative, trying to retain this procedural authority that presidents have had for 20 years. I mean, this administration has no big ideas left. It's becoming like one of these long, artsy French films where you sit around thinking, what's the point? Well, it's very, I mean, he does, he does have an agenda, and it was an education he agenda. And he what does, 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 okay, did and does. And it was an education agenda, and a, lot, and a lot of it's been accomplished. But the reason that he lost this thing is that trade is a very difficult matter for, for Democrats, even for new Democrats, and he failed to run this as an outside strategy to educate the country about why free trade is in everybody's national the interest. He played strange. it only as an inside, inside the beltway game, and you can't win that well, way on, I this, think, on this I, issue. I don't think that that is being spread wide enough here. You've got labor, you've got business, you've got environmentalists, you have Dick Gephardt, and you have Clinton himself. This was a winnable issue. Is it not, did it not go down because of Bill Clinton more than any one of those four other factors? I ask you, David. I don't think it's any, I, it was definitely winnable. Uh, I, I don't think the Hard but winnable. Yeah, tough, tough but doable. Uh, I, I think the president made the right decision not to put it up in the spring. He's being hit by that because I think he had to stick But why does he have to, be take, the, to take the culpability? Well, why does I, he? Well, there, there, there are lots of reasons. I mean, he didn't play it to win. He thought he could just slip it through on an inside. And he cohabited a little bit too much with the Republicans. He got slapped uh, back by his own uh, party. Uh, which does not want to go into the 98 elections with a Democratic president who stands up for a balanced budget, welfare reform, you know, and trade deals, you know, well, uh, because that isn't what well, elects uh, he, Democrats. Oh, and reason, also, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. He also yoked himself 
a little bit too much to Al Gore, and it makes it, you know, it makes it difficult the, for him the... to make peace with Richard Gephardt. Now, the first call he made was to Richard Gephardt, and let's see if they can put together a Democratic trade deal. Is yeah, Gore, lose, Gore lose Republicans. The Gore is still the front runner, but is the but old Democratic Party is the new it, Democratic Party now the old Democratic Party, the party no, of Labor? No, not no, not yet. Bill, it's still Bill Clinton's party, but the the, the liberals are trying to make a comeback. And this yeah. is a step in that direction. How, ser how serious is it? Exit the question. How serious? It's very We're serious. losing a fast track. We haven't said anything about the world economy. The fact that he's going to APEC with his tail between his legs in Vancouver in two weeks. He's going to Santiago next year to meet with all the heads of state down there on a big trade summit. It's the most serious blow he's had politically in the last three or four years. It's, it, it's hurt him overseas and here. It's hurt his Democratic Party. I think it's hurt Al Gore. I think it's hurt his second term. I, I, but he's not a lame duck. Is he a lame duck? Uh, as long as Al Gore looks like the heir apparent, Bill Clinton is not a lame duck. He's not a lame duck un unless the 98 elections Democrats really get tanked. Well, then it's over. Right now, he's, he's a genius at reinventing himself. And I, he'll reinvent himself again. Are you slurring again. Al Gore with that statement? No. No. As I, long as no. Al Gore is there, it sounds as though like you're saying that he's going, Al Gore is going to make Clinton look good no matter what happens. Is no, that what you're if saying? You, if your vice president is going to succeed you, you're Quickly. no lame duck. If he walks and, and quacks like a lame duck, he's a lame duck. As far as serious policy initiatives are concerned, this administration is spent. That's not this is one big loss. He, it is recoverable, and I predict that he will recover. He's a lame duck, but so is Gingrich. <laughs> so no one can impose policy on the other from either end of Pennsylvania same, Avenue. It won't be same lame duck and bank guy in a few days. Issue three, the check is in the trunk. The specter of Whitewater has risen again, this time from a junkyard automobile trunk. In South Little Rock at Johnny's Transmission Shop, mechanic Johnny Lawhorn was about to trash a car left on his lot for 10 years. Before junking the vehicle, Lawhorn pried open the trunk and discovered thousands of pages of bank files. Among the documents, a 1982 cashier's check payable to Bill Clinton for $27,600. The check was found last March. The car belonged to Henry Floyd, a former courier for James McDougall, a one-time friend and business partner of President Clinton. Floyd worked at Madison Guarantee Savings and Loan with McDougall, and Floyd claims that he totally forgot about the six years' worth of files in the trunk, which had been collected for a delivery to the Madison Bank storage facility. In April 1996, President Clinton swore in a deposition that he never borrowed money from MacDougall or Madison Guarantee. But the amount of the trunk check corresponds exactly to the amount of a Whitewater loan repayment. The check was never endorsed by Mr. Clinton. Speaking from a federal prison, however, James MacDougall said that the newly discovered records could spell big trouble for the Clintons. They're going to hang them with the documents that they got. It certainly proves the chief executive perjured himself when he said he never obtained a loan from Madison Guarantee. Question, if Clinton did not cash the check, and he did not, can he claim that he did not perjure himself in his April 96 deposition? Eleanor Cliff. Well, first of all, all of this went was investigated by the J. Stevens RTC report, which for all Pillsbury the inside, report. the Pillsbury report, exactly. Right. What it is, it's a, it's, it's, it was the scam that was run by McDougal, where he was borrowing money from his own bank, and he didn't want to write it all out in his name, and he used Clinton's name. Clinton never touched the money. It did not go into Clinton campaigns. No, there's no perjury Ella, charge. Ella Pillsbury did not have the check and the thousands of documents contained in the trunk when it wrote the report. You want to say something about that's, this? That's exactly right. Now, now Eleanor is going to groan over here, but the, 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 the whole point of this Whitewater scandal is, is the question, was Clinton bilking this SNL? And this is the first serious evidence that there was money coming out of that SNL to Clinton. Now, McDougal says it wasn't cash because Clinton was very careful to keep his name off of everything. That's worth investigating and finding out. The person doesn't get the money 
then he was well, then look, he didn't take a loan. No, wow. we, need, no wow. we need to know. Wow. Whether, look, how do you know he didn't have another way of getting it? <laughs> well, I, well, McDougal I, I, says, what, you know, McDougal David, says that Clinton looked at this David, check and said, no, I can't have my name on it. What kind of people carry around $25,000 checks in their trunk and then forget about it? It's just, it's so bizarre. Wow, who said he forgot about it? This occurred just about the time that Bill Clinton was beginning to move towards the presidency. Oh, about this, ten no, years no, no, ago. Ten years ago. Years ago. Little oh, this was a long, long Is it a smoking gun? No, I don't is think so. Is it a smoking so. gun? No. Is it a smoking, smoking gun? gun? That's big trouble. Is it a smoking oh. gun? No, unless there is a loan application in the same trunk. <laughs> Predictions. David. Uh, John, for those of us who care about school reform, I think we may have a new champion soon. It's the least likely place. It's the heart of villainy. The National Education Association with its new president, Bob Chase. Keep your eye on him. What a tragedy. <laughs>